shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, oh. <laughs> DJ LeMahieu has re-signed with the New York Yankees, finally, at six years for $90 million. Oh man, I remember there was just so much talk. Oh, Yankees this, Steve Cohen, the Dodgers, Uncle Steve, Cashman's cheap. He doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, he's being cheap. Oh, he's like Mr. Krabs. Get the hell out of here. Bottom line is, he's back. And for a bargain in the average annual value. Oh my God. So, um, I, so after I did the math, uh, 90 divided by six is 15. That is $15 million a year for a guy who's just coming off a batting title and just finished top five in MVP voting twice in a row. Two. So if anyone's curious for what his numbers were in his first two years as a Yankee, in 2019, he batted 327 on base of 375 and a slugging percentage of 518. For an OPS of, I can't find it because Fangraphs doesn't show up for some reason, and a WRC plus of 136 if you're into nerd stats. And in 2020, granted it was a smaller sample size, he hit 364, which was good for the Major League batting title, an on-base of 421, and an on-base of 590, which totals to an OPS of, hold on, hold on, mental math. Hold up, I'm not going to do the mental math. I, I literally have a calculator on my phone. Um, an OPS of 1.011, which is really good. If you don't know baseball or if you do know baseball, you should know that that is really good. So what this basically means is that one of the most consistent hitters in baseball and one of the only consistent hitters in this Yankee lineup is going to be a New York Yankee for the next six years and probably the rest of his career. Because at 38 years old, I doubt he's going to be seeking another payday, much less with another team. If you're wondering what this does to the makeup of the roster, LeMahieu will still be buying leadoff. And if LeMahieu went somewhere else, there probably would have been a crazy controversy, but it probably would have ended up with Aaron Hicks batting leadoff because he's done that before. And whenever LeMahieu is out with injury, which is rare, um, Hicks always takes up the leadoff spot. And for those who are wondering about the middle infield situation, Glaber Torres will probably be playing shortstop, and they'll see if he can figure out whatever the hell is going on with his glove over there. So I said something before, and I said this on the show this week, when I heard that LeMay, he was literally just starting to negotiate with our teams. I figured it was only a matter of time before he found out where he was going to go because he fielded offers from... I know the exact numbers of the offers he got from Toronto and the offers he got from the Dodgers. From the Dodgers, he got four by 60, four years for 60 million. The same average annual value, but two less years and $60 million um, is much less than we thought he was going to get. From Toronto, however, he was given four by 78. 78 million divided by four is $19.5 million per year. And that's a lot more than what he actually ended up selling for with the Yankees. So it turns out that those extra years were actually paramount. And I remember hearing so much about how the Yankees were so stubborn on that fifth year and how they were only going to go four years and they weren't going to go any higher. But it turns out they actually went the extra mile and went for year number six, which I didn't even think was possible. I thought that was out of the realm of possibility. When I woke up this morning and I saw the, the tweet that LeMahieu was staying with the Yankees, I thought, oh, they'd give him something like 4 by 84 That was the thing that I heard before with the previous Yankee offers. And I was thinking, ah, eh, maybe they gave him the fifth year. But I found out, like, at, at school today, that, that they actually gave LeMahieu the sixth year, which I didn't even think was in, even in the realm of possibility, but there was probably some negotiations there where... Like, the offer from Toronto is so much that they had to tack on the six here. Which I don't really blame them for doing that because LeMahieu, he has a game that ages really well. He hits for contact. He hits the other way. And he hits a lot to right field in Yankee Stadium, which, <laughs> yeah, that produces a lot of power. That can produce a lot of offense. And he is tailor-made for this lineup. He is one of the sole contact hitters in a lineup that's filled to the brim with guys that swing for the fences and there's nothing wrong with that like I'm not trying to say that there's anything wrong with the way Aaron Judge plays or the way Giancarlo Stanton plays it's 
it's just it adds a little balance if you get what i mean because in 2018 it was so irritating seeing a home run or nothing lineup somehow win 100 games and then get flattened in the playoffs which hasn't happened to the yankees i mean even though this year they lost to Tampa in the division series they weren't flattened like they were against Boston and in 2019 they made it to the ALCS and they barely lost in six games god damn it Altuve but this re-signing shows that the New York Yankees are now the clear-cut favorite in a heavily weakened American League I don't care what anyone says about the rotation which is spotty and I'll get to that but this shows that if it's any year to take the American League and win the pennant and have a shot at winning the World Series, by golly, this is it. Because I wasn't certain on how the Yankees would be if, if LeMahieu would, would be gone. Because again, we wouldn't have any contact there. It would be a very one-dimensional lineup. But then LeMahieu comes back and this team's complete again, or at least the lineup. Now, if you're wondering what this is going to do to the Yankees' pursuit in getting a, another arm or re-signing Masahiro Tanaka, don't worry, I have the numbers right here. So this right here is the New York Yankees luxury tax payroll. And as you can see, the the 2021 luxury tax threshold is 210 million and the Yankees have around 10 million in tax threshold space to play around with. And I personally don't think that Hal Steinbrenner is gonna go over the luxury tax threshold hell i'm i'm even i'm thankful that he just locked up with you but i think this gives them a little bit of wiggle room to i i don't know if this is going to be enough to resign tanaka but this should definitely be enough to go after a guy like Corey kluber whose um whose demands were only around in the eight million dollar range the last i saw it like the highest was eight million dollars i saw it was like six to eight million dollars so eight million is the is about the furthest you can get on the mean for what Kluber for what Kluber wants, and and the Yankees have enough to do it, and I definitely think they should do it. And if you're wondering why I'm not talking about them getting more guys, let's be real. Hal Steinbrenner is not going over the luxury tax threshold. There is no way he's doing it. All he's been doing is hinting at budgeting, 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 budgeting. Hell, probably the reason they gave LeMahieu the sixth year was so they could balance out the the threshold this year and only give him $15 million annually. But regardless, I am very happy about this. And they should definitely go after a guy like Corey Kluber. Okay, so that was around the initial reaction I wanted to give to this absolute bombshell of a signing, which has been a long time coming. And for one... I am very, very, very happy. This is a good day in Yankee land. Very good day. Stay classy.